I'm uh, Stefano Francione uh, from uh, uh, Milano, Italy, working at the Claudio Monari Epilepsy Surgery Center. And I will try to summarize the um, workshop that we held at the beginning of the ILE International Congress uh, 2011 in Rome uh, about uh, uh, pediatric epilepsy surgery the Claudio Munari workshop 2011, which was dedicated to pediatric epilepsy surgery at the beginning of the fir third millennium. Uh, this workshop was divided in two uh, parts. Uh, the first one dealing with uh, um, indication to surgery and non-invasive diagnostic procedures, and the second part dealing with invasive diagnostic procedure, surgical procedures, and uh, results. In the first speaks, Professor Dalla Bernardina from Verona uh, told us that indication for surgical treatment in children must be considered not only on the basis of drug resistance and seizure frequency and severity, but also on the basis of cognitive development and behavior. Uh, particular attention, however, must be uh, put on having a good knowledge about specific genetic entities to avoid unusable surgery in cases like uh, a patient with uh, ring chromosome 20 or other genetic mutation. A very important tool, as stated uh, by uh, Dr. Anselthausen from Fokteroid, Germany, is uh, video G recording and uh, is important to state that whenever seizure persists with one or two anti-epileptic drugs, a VNLG monitoring is the most powerful tool to acquire electroclinical information that helps for defining the epileptic syndrome and uh, or a for having a first assessment uh, of the location of the epileptogenic uh, region. With this information, as well stated by, by Dr. Lucia Fusco from uh, Rome, uh, helps in performing a high-quality MRI, which is mandatory for correct surgical evaluation, and it must be performed and analyzed, taking into account brain maturation and electroclinical features. As I said, the second part of the uh, workshop uh, was uh, dedicated to uh, the analysis of the utility of invasive procedures such as subdural recording treated by Professor Luders from Cleveland, United States, and by stereogy uh, treated by Professor Kahn from Grenoble, France. Uh, both said that invasive recordings are probably less frequently used in children than in adults, but they remain mandatory in many situations, especially extratemporal and MRI negative cases, uh, in order to delineate the seizure onset zone and or to perform functional mapping, also giving the possibility to evaluate objectively the chances of seizure freedom after surgery. By the past, subdural electrodes were mostly utilized in children since they allow to cover a large part of the cortical surface and permit a precise functional mapping. As you can see in this part uh, of the slide, uh, where there is a reconstruction of a brain with the subdural grid implanted, in fact, uh, the coverage of the surface of the brain is wide and uh, uh, it could be reconstructed the function of uh, a different part of the brain in this sense, this uh, yellow circle are the motor region. However, uh, there are a number of potential epileptogenic brain regions that cannot be sampled by subdural electrodes, such as, for instance, mesiotemporal region, insulin, and plano temporale. And uh, therefore, stereogy recordings that have been proved safe and feasible in children as young as three years are increasingly utilized. And as you can appreciate in this part of the slide, in fact, the intracerebral depth electrodes can perfectly sample the cortical areas of the insula, the depth of the suicide, and also the intralesional tissue uh, of whatever lesion we need to explore. 
After this, Dr. Giorgio Lorusso from our center in uh, Milano took us about uh, different surgical techniques, saying that a number of surgical procedures are available in children, from legionectomies to tailored cortisectomies, large multilobal resection, and even complete hemispherectomy or hemispherotomy. We have some example of this kind of uh, uh, surgical resection, such as this sublobar <coughs> resection in this case, uh, this uh, frontal lobe complete resection in this case, this kind of occipitotemporal resection, till an hemispherotomy procedure or an hemispherotomy procedure like this one. The most important criteria for choosing one procedure rather than another is to carefully analyze individual anatomo electroclinical correlation. Proceeding in this way, as uh, uh, Dr. Ingrid Tuxon from Cleveland stated in the, uh, the last talk of the workshop, excellent results can be obtained in terms of seizure freedom, even if cognitive improvement need to be better evaluated, especially in the so-called catastrophic epilepsies.